Just a second, Tiger. Dad? <laughs> Christmas is one of the best times of the year for many. It's a season that always comes with feelings of joy and nostalgia. The thoughts of baked goodies, gifts, and the Christmas spirit at every turn. But there's one thing that Christmas as we know it, just won't be complete without. Santa Claus. Santa himself is a representative of Christmas and all the wonderful feelings it brings us. It would be difficult to imagine Christmas without the jolly old man being present in malls, on Christmas cards, within the lyrics of songs, and in the stories to tell children. But even though Santa has been around for centuries, he owes a considerable part of his immense success in the modern world to the popular soft drink company, Coca-Cola. However, contrary to a popular belief, Coca-Cola didn't invent Santa Claus. They didn't even give him his characteristic red and white outfit. The relationship between Santa and Coca-Cola can be defined as a partnership which turned out to be great for both the chubby old man and the soft drink producers. This is the story of how Coca-Cola shaped our modern image of the one and only Santa Claus. The Santa we know and love today is a product of several different influences from different cultures around the world and at different points in history. But the origin of Santa can be traced back to a religious figure named Saint Nicholas who lived over a thousand years ago. He was a Greek bishop of a village called Myra which is in present-day Turkey. Saint Nicholas was a popular man who was known for his generosity towards the poor. He had inherited a fortune from his parents and used it to help the less privileged and to give children gifts. According to popular accounts, he once paid the dowries of three young women whose family had become impoverished. In those days, a woman's family had to offer something of value to the prospective groom before she could get married. But because these women did not have anything to offer as a dowry, they would have to become prostitutes to earn a living. When St. Nicholas heard of the situation that this family was in, he took a bag of gold and tossed it into their house through a window. The bag landed in a stocking, which was placed near the fireplace to dry. Sounds familiar right? He did this on three separate nights, dropping a bag of gold for each of the women to use as a dowry. In the Middle Ages, St. Nicholas Day was celebrated in his honor on the 6th of December. During the celebrations, gifts would be given to children in memory of the generosity of the saint. Over time, this custom of gift-giving was incorporated into Christmas. But Saint Nicholas maintained his popular position of being the bearer of gifts. This gift-giving figure of the Saint Nicholas was particularly widespread in the Netherlands, where they would celebrate the Feast of Saint Nicholas, the Dutch variant of Saint Nicholas, on the 6th of December by leaving gifts for their children. Of course, their children would believe that the generous saint had paid them a visit and brought them the gifts. The saint was commonly depicted as an elderly man with a long and full white beard, who wore a long, red cape and a bishop's attire. The story of St. Nicholas traveled all the way from Europe to the Dutch colony of New Amsterdam, which is now known as New York City. A Dutch intellectual named Washington Irving, who lived in New York, published a book containing satirical adaptations of some Dutch stories and traditions. In his book, one of the characters in the stories was Sinterklaas, who was an adaptation of St. Nicholas. It's easy to see how Sinterklaas quickly came to be called Santa Claus by English-speaking New Yorkers of that time. St. Nicholas the Gift Giver was eventually merged with Father Christmas, who was an English character originating sometime around the 16th century. Father Christmas was pictured as a large man, wearing green or scarlet robes, with white fur trimmings. He brought with him the joyful Christmas spirit. The merging of the two figures, one largely Dutch in origin and the other English in origin, became what was popularly regarded as Santa Claus. The bringer of gifts and holiday cheer. However, at this point, there were still variations concerning what Santa looked like. Sometimes, he would be drawn or painted in a bishop's outfit, or as a tall and lanky man. In 1863, this discrepancy was settled when a cartoonist named Thomas Nast was hired by a popular magazine known as Harper's Weekly. 
Inspired by the popular poem, The Night Before Christmas, Thomas drew cartoons of Santa, in relation to the American Civil War. It was through these drawings that Thomas immortalized the image of Santa, that is widespread today. A chubby, old man with a big belly, white beard, and a red woolen suit. Though, he sometimes drew Santa with a green woolen suit, instead of a red one. For about 40 years, Nass dished out these holiday drawings. During the 20th century, Coca-Cola stepped in. Although the company did not invent Santa or even customize him, they played a big role in shaping and popularizing the Santa that has become a staple in our holiday celebrations. Coca-Cola began their relationship with Santa Claus in the 1920s. During winter, sales were usually slow for the soft drink market. In an attempt to boost their sales, Coca-Cola turned to Santa for help. They created magazine ads, using an image of Santa that was very similar to the ones that Thomas Nast drew. However, this Santa did not have the cheery look and character that we are used to. The magazine ads featured notable locations, like the world's largest soda fountain, and popular department stores. These advertisements were working their magic, and helping Coca-Cola to boost its sales during the festive period, However, in 1931, with the help of the Darcy Advertising Agency and Michigan-born artist, Haddon Sundblom, Coca-Cola gave Santa a bit of a facelift. They wanted to depict Santa as a realistic, relatable character, someone who wasn't just a person in a costume, but an actual Santa Claus that embodied the true Christmas spirit. Haddon also turned to the popular poem, The Night Before Christmas to get his creative juices flowing. This poem describes Santa, as a chubby, and plump, jolly old elf with cheeks like roses, who entered into houses by sliding down the chimney. Haddon used the author's description of Saint Nicholas, to depict the warm, friendly, portly old Santa, that a lot of people become familiar with, as children. The images of Santa that Haddon drew pictured Santa holding Coke bottles, drinking Coke, and receiving bottles of Coke as gifts. In some of the pictures, Santa was reading letters, visiting with children, delivering toys, raiding refrigerators for Coke, and generally performing actions that made him more relatable and eventually made him well-known and loved by the public. These ads were regularly placed in popular magazines such as, The Saturday Evening Post, Ladies Home Journal, National Geographic, and The New Yorker. They were also used on billboards and store displays. Before television and colored motion pictures became widespread, and while newspapers were still printed in only monochrome, Coca-Cola's ads in magazines, billboards, store displays, and on their delivery trucks, were the major places for Americans to get exposed to the Christmas figure of Santa Claus. These images were such a huge hit that it not only boosted their sales, but children started leaving out bottles and cups of Coke at night for Santa Claus. The campaign's success was legendary. They adopted a seasonal character that had a lot in common with the brand. From the red and white outfit, which so fortunately matches Coca-Cola's colors, to the company's value of sharing happiness which Santa is known for. People looked forward to their campaigns at the end of the year. These ads were engaging, relatable, and easy to love. Haddon Sundblom created his last painting in 1964, but for a few more decades, Coca-Cola continued to use images of Santa in their ads, based on Haddon's work. Haddon's original paintings are prized pieces of art now. But what is even more prized, are the pictures of holiday cheer and giving, that he painted in our minds using these ads. Now, Santa Claus is still a well-loved character all around the world. Different cultures have, of course, put their different spins on the popular gift-giving figure. And it's no longer a common practice to leave bottles of Coke out for the traveler to have a refreshing break after his journeys through the sky. However, the impact of Coca-Cola's Santa Claus can still be felt in modern times. All because of a business brand that chose to tell its story with the help of a mythical character. So, that's a wrap for this magical story of Santa and Coca-Cola. For more amazing business stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.